today. It's hot game summer, according to Jeff Keighley, and I guess he would know. This is Checkpoint. Welcome to Checkpoint, where we like to get on the reel. The reel. That's right. Like the gag reel, the fishing reel? No, no, like the like the real reel. Like keeping it real. Oh, like Louis Riel, like keeping it Louis Riel. No one says that. No one but Ian says that. I had a cold last week, but I drank my fluids and got plenty of rest, so this is my reward for being a good boy. Quantic Dream's co-CEOs, David Cage and Guillaume de Fondemer, absolutely melted down during the trial for the company's defamation lawsuits against French news publications Le Monde and Mediapart. As we've previously passed on, the publications reported back in 2018 that Quantic Dream's working culture is riddled with offensive jokes, crunch, and sexual misconduct. These allegations Quantic Dream took umbrage with, culminating in this ongoing trial. Among the allegations were quotes attributed to Cage, such as, In my games, all women are whores, and we don't make games for a slur that I won't repeat here, especially not during the month of June. While on the stand, Cage himself reportedly stomped his feet and cried, yelling about interferences to his business and his honor before storming out of the courtroom like a child, allegedly while co-CEO Fondamier conducted his testimony with all the good judgment of a certified brain genius by looking at the judges and asking, but I'm not under oath, so I can lie? Before reportedly claiming that Quantic Dream was seriously damaged by the original allegations, despite being unable to provide proof of such damages. And finally, Quantic Dream provided the courts with documents that were intended to defend them against accusations of social security fraud by demonstrating that they acted in good faith during the termination of a former employee. But upon further inspection, the documents featured irregularities that only raised more questions, such as how a pile of letters of dismissal are apparently identical, except for the employees' names, all of them noting differences of opinion with the management, including one apparently in Fondamier's own name? He hasn't resigned. The translations are a little unclear. Ruling comes down on July 8th, but until then, the mental image of David Cage rage-quitting a courtroom will sustain me. Square Enix has finally addressed a flaw with a door in Final Fantasy VII Remake, and stay with me here. It's now a door. That's right, the famous and beloved Cloud Strife's door, really the pinnacle of every Final Fantasy fan's experience with not just Seven, but the entire Final Fantasy franchise, is working correctly. Just as it was before. Because, you see, before it was a door. And then in the remake it was a door. And fans wailed and gnashed their teeth at this door being merely a door. And lo, did they take to the Twitters and the Reddits and make their wrath known upon the world. And Square Enix saw the door and knew it was a door and said, that door is a door. And so we shall fix it. So it becomes a door. And Square Enix did repair the door by making it look less shiny and indeed look at how shiny the door was. And so the door has become a door, but only in Final Fantasy VII Integrate for the PS5 and not on the PS4 release of the remake, presumably because the PS4 simply does not possess the technical acumen to make the door be a door. Hey kids, you like cranking it? Is not a slogan the developers of Playdate are using. But if you are into cranking it, and a 1-bit color palette, and a 400 by 250 pixel screen, and a really small form factor with a dummy thick optional charging dock, then you might be in the probably quite narrow customer demographic who wants this thing. But then, so am I. The Playdate, developed by Panic, publishers of Firewatch and Untitled Goose Game, is a weird thing. And I don't think there's any other way to describe it. And furthermore, I think Panic would agree. 
It's a little handheld device with a D-pad, two buttons, and a manual crank as an input medium. But the crank isn't a requirement for every game. It's just there if you want it. The device goes on sale for pre-order in July at $179, which also includes 24 games parceled out as free downloads twice weekly for 12 weeks. That mad thick charging dock I mentioned is an optional extra except for the part where it makes the playdate look like a clock radio from the 1970s, so definitely not optional. It's even going to come with a curated playlist of chill vibes, uh, or also it's a Bluetooth speaker, and it comes with that pen. It can output video to a computer, there's a free browser-based tool set on the horizon, and they've mentioned opportunity for developers to sell games independently of Panic. So, again, this thing is weird, and that's just about my speed right now. Exciting developer news this week, Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart was apparently made without crunch. And before your inner cynic thinks this is all a PR ploy, everyone reporting so far from within Insomniac Games appears to be developers on their own Twitter accounts, which I guarantee you is absolutely giving the PR team a collective shit hemorrhage right now. Polygon's Liana Ruppert has reached out to several other devs on the team, and they're all relating similar experiences. And since it's now in the video game news and also on a video game comedy news show, it stands to reason that anyone who did crunch will come out of the woodwork to spread the hot goss. So now that a game scoring in the producer bonus bracket of 89% can be made without abusing its developers, does this herald the death of crunch in an industry where it's so endemic? No, it doesn't! Why would it? Now stop watching YouTube and get back to reticulating splines! Got time for some quick points? Only if they're quick. I promise nothing. The first half of Minecraft's now two-part Cliffs and Caves update just landed with new blocks like Drip Leaf, Moss Carpet, Glow Lichen, Deep Slate, and others that also sound like they could be weed strains. As well, water creatures can now be hunted by Apex Predator, the Axolotl. While the players have to watch out they don't get shoved off a precarious mountaintop by another new creature, the Asshole Goat, known also as a goat. The Summer Games Fest was this morning. Think of it like the Game Awards, but without the facade of having to give awards away between all the world premiere trailers. Hideo Kojima announced he wants to try being less prescient in his constant predictions of doom and gloom before also announcing a Death Stranding director's cut, implying he somehow didn't already have full creative control of the game. And in another non-announcement, two dudes who used to work at Treyarch announced they've made a different studio, and all we know is they have t-shirts. Oh, and FromSoft actually announced an Elden Ring release date, so everybody lost that bet. New Fortnite's just dropped. Now available in Epic Games' alleged metaverse is famously bulletproof Superman, who surprisingly has yet to appear anywhere near Tomato Town, and also Rick from And Morty. So a seemingly all-powerful intergalactic uber being capable of bringing empires to their knees, yet who adheres to a personal ethical code and the same but with belching. Not announced at Summer Games Fest, someone hacked into EA and stole the source code for FIFA 21, and the source code for its matchmaking, and the source code for the entire Frostbite engine. Which, uh, seems bad? That's all we know right now, but anytime something bad happens to EA, there's a little frisson of schadenfreude that runs down my spine, so I thought I'd share it with you. The Brazilian Real? No, shut up. We did that already. Hey, he said, desperately changing the subject. Got any plans for hot game summer? I was thinking coconut oil. Just like a big old tub of coconut oil. Hell yeah, get that tan. And some celery and carrot sticks for dipping. Do you eat coconut oil? Is it not a food product? I don't know. Coming up, I spent several hours on the official Fruits Basket Island in Animal Crossing New Horizons. I may not have turned into an animal, but at least I didn't get stabbed! Do you have any intent of watching the Summer Game Fest? Uh, oh, absolutely not. VOD. I didn't, I didn't assume so. Also, I don't think we had VODs of it. Well, we didn't, ah, obviously, but okay. you could just watch the official VOD. Oh, I see. Yeah, we were not allowed to make VODs of it because Weezer was performing. Ah. That's not true, that's not actually. Is that true, just better that's, judgment? Is that that's, no, no, no. They, uh, they, we, we did a co-stream of it. No. Paul and I did a co-stream of it. We're going to try and get the VOD online on the, on the, other, on the other channel. 
and uh, the advice from Twitch was to disable VODs and clips just in case there was something in the stream that might DMCA you. Despite but, the fact that we were told that all the music was completely cleared for rebroadcast. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and the Weezer performance was explicitly like a song that they made that they like that wasn't that was like streamer friendly or something yeah. or whatever it was that Jeff Keighley said. Cool. It had a lot of heater gamer moments in it. Anyway, no, it okay, was that's just good. I'm glad. <laughs> I'd be feeling was, really bad for Weezer if that was the case. No, they like dragged Pitchfork. Hey, all right. At one point, that was kind of funny, I guess. Um, but if if you at home uh, are uh, planning on on watching the VOD of the Summer Game Fest to see what you missed, uh, here's a drinking game. Um, anytime Yggdrasil, the World Tree, appears. Uh, our friend Felix counted three. Um, In any different trailers? Yeah, yeah. Uh, anytime there's a dragon, uh, I think, Paul, I think we got up to six, six or seven Holy dragons. Um, there's also, anytime Jeff Keeley manages to work into conversation that he is Canadian, at least three times, if not four, All you right. know, like my fellow Canadian, this person, or like this company from Toronto, a, you know. I, I would have done the same thing, let's uh, be honest. Yeah. Uh, and then there's also, uh, what did we call them, Paul? Mystical Elk. There was, there's like just like three or four different trailers with like large glowing stags, um, stag like creature, things with big antlers. There was also one with a cat with antlers uh, that, that you, that they pet. I guess technically in the trailer. counts maybe. I sure. guess maybe you you can decide depending on how you're feeling. Uh, you can you can you can decide. Okay, good drinking game so far. Yeah, no, I mean, I think I that's think kind of I, the... I think that's all I got. You okay, could do good. it every time that they play the world premiere graphic if you feel like dying. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> and but, when and when yeah. FromSoft drops that Elden Ring trailer, drink heavily. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It was great because um, Jeff Keeley was hyping it up, right? He's like, and finally, we got one last very special thing. Uh, so excited that these people have decided, you know, they believe in what we're doing here and they decided that this is where they want to share this, 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 this news. Uh -huh. And, uh, we had people in our, in our chat who were like, it's not Elden Ring. It's not Elden Ring. And I said this as much at the time that that's like a self-preservation tactic yeah. that they don't hype themselves up. That then when it's not Elden Ring that they're, that they're not crushed. They're like, ha, I told you it wasn't Elden Just Ring. put their fist right through the monitor, yeah. Yeah, exactly. But then it was Elden Ring and everyone lost their minds. Good. So it looks like, um, it's, uh, it looks like Dark Souls, but there's a horse. So. Is it, is it a centaur? Uh, no. Damn. No. I but mean, okay, can, that's fine. I don't have any weird it thoughts can about centaurs. jump like way up a a thing that's like the guy rode it onto like a thing and then the horse like jumped real high like real high like, like higher than a horse can jump yeah no no like superman high at, like, at like, rest like up a cliff <laughs> okay yeah, yeah 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 okay I gotta I, I can't wait to and see and if you're into the Soulsborne games yeah uh, which I am academically mm. uh, then it's very exciting there's, a, there's an actual release date June, uh, June, June, January, the other one, January 22nd. Yeah. So about seven months out. But hey, that's a firm date. Yeah. That's nice. This is, you know how I don't, you don't give a shit about this game. Yes, so you thank don't, you. Yeah. You don't know this. No. But you've experienced in the Nintendo circles uh -huh. how um, people get mad that there's been no news about a game that they know is coming out. I experience it on the daily, actually. Yeah, yes. yeah. Heather, make sure to inform me about how these things are going. Good. So... Elden Ring, thank you. That was another update. Elden Ring is mimetic to that level of, of prior to today. Yeah. Of we know it's coming, we know they're working on it, but they refuse to say anything or show us anything or share anything. Right. So it's it hadn't quite gotten to like Duke Nukem Forever. Duke Nukem Forever. It's exactly what yeah. I was saying. It hadn't quite gotten to those levels, but it was like it. You know, people were like goofing on it. Uh, you know, but uh, now. Now there's now they did a release date, so That's it's awesome. like all right, yeah. It didn't. It never got to like. It never even got to like Last Guardian levels or Daikatana stuff. Well, Daikatana was just Daikatana came out on time. It was just crap. Oh well, I mean, yeah, that's right. It was about that was about the hyping of how good the game was going to be, right? Yeah. Not about when it was arriving. You know, right. we don't we don't do that anymore. No more no more hyping games. E3 is doing it. They're going to be giving out their own awards. That's like good. Most anticipated game. Yeah. Most Oops. well received video game trailer. Um, most uh, amount of people in our chat uh, saying slurs. <laughs> we call this an epic gamer moment. Mm.